Hey guys, Pat here. So I went with one of my nephews. I have four of them. And uh, the youngest one is five. So I went with him to go see The Nut Job 2, Nutty by Nature. Um, it, was, it was much better than going to see the Emoji Movie by myself. Actually having a kid with me didn't make it look so creepy. And uh, people probably just thought it was my kid or something. I didn't see the first Nut Job movie. Um, I, I wasn't even that aware of it. I remember seeing a couple trailers for it. I knew Will Arnett voiced the squirrel. Um, this movie's come out now. It cost $40 million, and it had one of the lowest opening weekends of all time for a movie released in 4,000 theaters. It's been getting terrible reviews. Um, it's It looks like a straight-to-DVD flick. I'm not even sure why they released it in theaters. So... I never thought I was going to review this, but as fate just had it fall upon me to go see this um, with a nephew, that's just how things happen sometimes. So here's my review of The Nut Job 2, Nutty by Nature. Ah, oh, Nutty by Nature indeed. So this cinematic brilliance was brought to us by director Cal uh, Brunker, who's only made one film before this. And I, 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 once again, I didn't see the first film, but I could gather that the first film seemed to be about this main squirrel character, Surly, voiced by Will Arnett. I guess taking over a nut shop at the end of the first flick. Like, I'm thinking maybe it was a heist movie. So he takes over the nut shop. In the beginning of this movie, they're, they're in a giant nut shop. Like, they're all up in these nuts. I mean, these, these, these little rodents are just swimming in peanuts. And they have a dog, and the dog's eating peanut butter, I think. The dog's called Precious, voiced by uh, Maya Rudolph. It's just weird. It starts off very surreal. Like, it's it's this fetishistic thing about nuts. I, I, I don't really know what much much more to add to that. It, it, it commits the, the sin early on of starting with a pop song. Like, the first sequence of this film, the first big sequence where stuff's happening in the beginning, it's freaking pop music. I was like, come on, guys. Really? Really? I mean, I, I go to see Illumination films, and I know that's going to happen, but this movie, I was hoping. It's like, oh, maybe you'll care more about tone. No. Um, uh, the animation's colorful. I got to give them credit for that. Like, for a low-budget flick, they, they spent less on this than the Emoji movie, and I thought the animation was miles more uh, interesting than the Emoji movie. I mean, it's your typical little animal flick, visually, and the designs aren't that special. But it's, it's still pretty cool. Um, it, it looks it looks nice like like parts of it. I think the actual backgrounds and stuff like that look pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to talk to my friend Fox or he's a furry and ask him what he thinks about this. It seems like a furry movie, though not as well done as Utopia, obviously. Good voice acting. Will Arnett's actually really good in this. Maya Rudolph's pretty good. Um, I can't remember the actor's name. I think it's Bobby Carnavali or something. He voices this one dog that's actually, in my mind, the most likable character in the flick. All the voice acting's good, though. It's very it's very funny and on point. The voice actors. I'm not saying the dialogue is or what's happening, but there's good delivery here. And obviously, Will Arnett always has good delivery. So that, that goes without saying. So the movie starts, and Surly, he has the nut shop... And they're all just partying, and there's this other squirrel character. I think the name her name was Andy, and she's all like, "Hey, oh, it was Catherine Heigl too? She's in this, which is weird. She's like, "Hey, we gotta go be natural squirrels again and like hunt." And then he's like, "No, nah, let's stay at the nut shop." And then the nut shop blows up, and they have to go out and be normal squirrels again. And I thought that was gonna be the pre premise of the flick. I was like, okay, so it's about these squirrels going out and learning to become animals again, something like. It kind of reminded me of Over the Hedge, I guess. But then, it, it has like 10 plots that start to come in. This movie's so overcomplicated. I don't know what they were thinking. Like, this is for little kids. I mean, small children. And the movie's needlessly complicated. Like, that. there's your premise. Nutshot blows up. They have to go be normal animals again. No, we introduce new characters. We introduce this, introduce this evil mayor character that wants to turn their park into like an amusement park or something or a mall or some crap he's a uh, I think it was amusement park is what he eventually turns it into but I don't know if that was his original plan but he's your evil capitalist warlord that's what it is it's this anti-capitalist story it's all about the environment and all that stuff and how you know these corporations come in and destroy the forest and trees and the animals 
and think about the animals. I don't know why. They have the Lorax message in the middle of this movie. Um, it's very forced and poorly thought out. It's it's kind of ridiculous to even have it in there. And there's even lines of dialogue. It's like, don't forget about the little guy. And I was just like, come on. Like, I'm sitting there with my nephew. He doesn't know what you're talking about. He's not learning any valuable life lesson from this. Oh, don't hurt animals. Yeah, probably shouldn't do that. Care about care about the squirrels and the, and the trees. But then the mayor gets introduced, and after he get, comes in, then his daughter gets introduced, and she's... She's basically Darla from Finding Nemo, or that girl from Tiny Toon Adventures. She's just an evil little girl that wants to hurt animals. It's it's something you've seen before. She's too sweet about it, but she's really just cruel. Um, and then their dog Precious gets taken by the little girl because the other her little dog falls in love with um, falls in love with Precious. So then you have that movie going on, and then the the rodents decide they're gonna fight the corporate guy. They're gonna fight the the mayor. And that's a segment of the movie. Then it becomes this, oh, we're going to go find another park. Then even more stuff gets piled on where they introduce these, like, martial artist mouses or rats or whatever. Jackie Chan's comes in out of nowhere. And he doesn't like being called cute. So then there's this whole thing with, with their characters and their backstory. God, there's so many things. Like, I'm not kidding. Every few minutes they just introduce some new plot thread and they don't connect and the movie isn't really focused on telling a story or or developing characters it's a bunch of action scenes like this movie strung together over 91 minutes by action scenes the plot's all over the place the plot is is nuts no pun intended the plot's nuts it's just all over the place there's no focus they didn't pick one idea let's focus on this relationship this relationship this theme there's a lot here there's like a dozen things they're trying to do in this movie total mess um complete mess i don't know why they made it needlessly uh, complicated uh outside of that though once the plot starts to fall apart what exists of a plot you're like okay well i guess i'll just watch these animated sequences these these action scenes these these animators are putting together and that's that's all it is you're just watching animators put together these action scenes with no emotional substance because you don't care about the characters there's a couple cool action scenes too there's this vacuum cleaner scene where they're getting sucked up by vacuums and you see them like going up in the air and moving in different directions through boxes and stuff and it's kind of like gravity the movie gravity but with animated rodents it's really cool very clever idea Everything else is typical stuff. It's a roller coaster ride, chase sequences, um, just that same old typical garbage that's in every other animated animal flick. It's, I mean, it's the most stereotypical stuff. All the jokes are really bad. I mean, they're all as cliche of jokes as you could imagine. Like, there's a part where they they destroy a trailer and they're like trailer trash. It's just a bunch of bad one-liners and really bad jokes. Surly, played by Will Arnett, he kind of can be funny in like. You know, he says things that are meant to be funny, but they're not funny, but the characters don't think they're funny, so there's at least a, a premise with it. There is one joke I liked. I wrote it down. It's early in the movie, because I didn't laugh throughout this movie except one time. They, they go to steal a donut after they lose the nut shop, and him and his uh, best friend, like, rat character are running with this donut that they take from uh, the police at this donut shop. And the cops then get a call, and they have to go... St- they have to go see what's going on but the two of them think the cops are chasing them for the donut so they're running with this donut and the cop car's like right behind them and the tire of the cop car runs over the donut and the two of them barely get away and then the cops ride off and will arnett leans over and he's like man those guys take donuts really seriously or he says those guys really hate donut thieves or something like that but it was kind of funny like it was i wish they would have done that more the animals not interpreting what the humans are doing uh, and and are misinterpreting it, I guess. So the animals are like, "Oh, this is what they're doing, but it's wrong." That that could have been a premise. There's a lot of things here they could have done. Instead, they try to hit everyone. They try to hit, and I've always said this: when you make a movie that's for everyone or anything, it sucks. So they try to make jokes for everyone. They try to make a plot for everyone. They try to do characters that are for everyone. Certainly, sort of interesting because he's a jerk and he sticks to that. He doesn't really have this character arc like other people do. Um, but the movie just starts to get boring. I tapped out probably 40 minutes in. I really did. Once they once they go on the quest through the city, and they tell you this backstory with Surly and his best friend, and then that goes on forever, and 
the third act's basically just a bunch of hijinks. It's it's what you expect. It's the animals versus the people. There's God, it's violent too. Oh my god, it's violent. They just want to, everyone in this universe just wants to kill animals. Like they they hire this exterminator guy and he catches them. He gets them in cages. I mean, he's like a, an animal catcher. Then he's like, "Oh, I can kill them." And then he blows up the whole park. He like blows these he's like throwing He's throwing dynamite into like trees and stuff, and into ro and like down holes, and trying to blow these guys up. I mean, it's nuts. Like everybody, and then the little girl, she wants to kill them. She's like, "Daddy, I can shoot." So she wants to kill animals. And I mean, very violent film. I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. It's just strange. Like, like it's needlessly violent. There's a. Uh, I mean, it's it's weird. It, it it's <laughs> it's like it's like every other human in this in this universe just wants to brutally murder animals, and these animals are constantly under threat from evil human beings trying to like just viciously kill them. Not not you know they die on accident or you know this you know it's circumstantial. No, it's like they hate these animals. They want to take them out. Uh, there's oh the tranquilizer gun shot the wrong person. Oh boy. But like I said, I tapped out about 40 minutes in. I got really mad about an hour into it because I realized there was still 20 minutes left and it started to drive me crazy. I started to go nuts. I couldn't handle this anymore. I knew exactly what their, their message was. I knew the jokes weren't going to pick up. I knew it was going to be the same kind of humor. I knew what the ending was going to be. I knew they weren't going to surprise me at all. The only element of this film that's kind of, to me, something interesting that could have been something that I kind of liked was the relationship between the two dogs because he's like a bad dog and he's actually a good dog and he's raised by this really abusive little girl and he's really sweet and loving to the other dog character and I don't know they kind of have a sweet relationship I actually could have watched that movie about these two dogs um living with this evil little girl this little rich girl who wants to hurt her pets but that's hardly the in the flick it's in it's just some of it most of it's surly going around doing stuff and it's just some um, cartoon scene where the animators are they don't really have a script or anything they just get to animate a sequence you can tell the animators just got to run wild on some of these sequences it's like oh let's just let's just do something um i don't know how many people worked on this script let me let me look here real quick the script was written by three people oh my god Produced by several people, big good good cast really. I mean, in my opinion, I think I think Will Arnett, and Maya Rudolph are really good in this. Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan's an awesome voice actor, but man, all the jokes are so one note. It's just hey, he's a martial artist, he's gonna beat people up, and it's and he's a, he's little and cute, but he can fight. He's all tough. Uh, the movie's not doing that great. It begs the question why they even made or released this flick. The nut job was probably like this kind of lightning in the bottle. God, nut job was made back in 2014. Okay, so the original nut job cost 42 million and made 120 million worldwide. So it didn't do that bad actually. But the sequel here's opening weekend was 8 million, and it's made 17 million domestic so far, and it's been out for a couple weeks. So it's a little weird. Like, I'm not sure why they waited three years to make a sequel to the nut job. I, I forgot about that movie. Um, maybe they should have made a sequel a year or two later. And I, I don't want to just accuse this of being lazy because they put more effort into this than, like, Sony did with the Emoji Movie. The Emoji Movie was much lazier than this. And I've seen worse animated films. I certainly have. This one, you know, is at least a cartoon. There's cartoon elements about it. Most of the comedy and visuals are based in the logic of animation and cartoons. But at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of offensive that it's so you know, tailor-made, so studio-packaged made to be for some movie you have your kids watch on, I don't know, Netflix or something like that. The kids the kids click on Netflix or they watch it. They watch it on TV. It's just, it's something that my nephew would have watched at home. And I asked him when we got out, you know, because he's, he's five. I said, you know, did you like that movie? And he's like, yeah, it was okay. That's how he looked at me. He looked at me and kind of shrugged like it was okay. And I'm like, wait, I went to go see that movie with you and you just thought it was okay? Oh my god. I'm glad that he's my nephew and not my son, because if I had to consistently go see bad animated flicks with my children, I think I would become cynical to the whole process. So even he didn't like it that much? He just said it was okay, which was kind of weird. I was expecting something else from a kid. I didn't expect something so, uh, just basic. 
<laughs> thought he would say like it was awesome, but no, I got okay. Uh, I don't think it's okay. I think it's pretty bad. I, I know I was a lot nicer on the emoji movie and my initial review, but that's just that's just because I was so indifferent and bored during that movie. And you know, I I gave that like a four or five, and I probably should have given it like a three to be honest with you. This movie, on the other hand, about forty five minutes in, I just tuned out. I wasn't even listening to the dialogue anymore. I wasn't even paying attention to the jokes. It was just noise to me, and I was just looking at it for the most part and, and not really paying attention. I, I mean, I'm just going to admit it. I kind of tuned out. I got so bored, and it just started to make me mad. I almost felt kind of sick. I wanted to get out of the theater. I did not want to sit there anymore wasting my life watching this. I know people go, oh, why weren't you just playing on your phone or something? It's like, I don't do that. I don't pull my phone out at the movie theater. So I just sat there and kind of bit the bullet. Um, I'm not trying to be, you know virtuous here and like oh i went to go see this bad movie it's just i'm just saying i you know i can't even review the third act of this flick like after they go to the city i don't know what happens i i just quit i quit paying attention anyway it the title nutty by nature's just ridiculous uh the the best compliments i can give colorful animation some some nice voice acting um the premise is bad the pacing's bad the pacing's really bad. For a 90-minute movie, it feels way too long. Uh, the the story's just so generic. It feels like something that would have been on TV, like a really bad Cartoon Network Nickelodeon kid show, not a good show. And it's just by the numbers. It's, it's, it's a weird film to release this year. I don't think they should have even made it. It is kind of useless. Maybe little children will like it, three- or four-year-olds, you know, if you show it to them. Uh, I think once you get past the age of six, seven, you won't really enjoy this movie. But that's just me. You know, if you have kids out there and you want to show them this movie, uh, don't let me stop you from, from doing that. But if you're an adult, no, don't go see this. This isn't one of those surprising gems, like one of these nice little funny flicks. I thought maybe it would be. I thought maybe the script would be surprising or that it would be better than what I was expecting. I mean, it has 11% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I was like, yeah, you know what? Critics went in wanting to hate this movie. But it's pretty bad. Anyway, if I had to give my arbitrary rating, I guess I would give it a 3 out of 10. And that 3 is solely there because I do think Will Arnett and Surly is kind of a likable character for the reasons that he sticks to who he is. And I do like the two dogs. And I do think some of the animations was fun to watch. And, and the colors were really nice. That's all I could say. They did they did an okay job on a lot of the, the technical aspects, aesthetic aspects, and sound and all that stuff. Everything else, though, was just, man, this was just such a, a factory-made product. I couldn't believe it. I've seen I've seen few animated films with this lack of character and emotion. It's ridiculous. And I don't know why they didn't do more with Surly. I don't know why they didn't really stick with the whole animals have to go back to nature um, thing. That was your premise. But they, they didn't stick to one premise the whole movie. Thanks for watching. And guys, please remember to rewind your VHS tapes before you take them back to the store. I don't want the employees to have to do it. Come on now.